All right, uh, batting cleanup for this morning uh, at the Cox Automotive Breakfast, we have Chip Perry. Chip is president and, C and chief executive officer of TrueCar. In his role, Perry is responsible for TrueCar's strategic direction, product vision, and operations. Perry also manages TrueCar's relationships with key external stakeholders, including dealers, dealer associations, automakers, consumers, regulators, affinity partners, and investors. The man is talking to everybody. Previously, Perry led AutoTrader.com in 1997, serving as its CEO from the company's inception until 2013. While there, he guided AutoTrader's evolution from a one-person startup into the world's largest online automotive marketplace. With 1.5 billion in annual revenue, that's billion with a B, 20,000 dealer customers, 16 million unique uh, monthly views, and 3,500 employees. Prior to starting AutoTrader, Chip was Vice President of New Business Development at the Los Angeles Times. In the early 1990s, when this all got started, he launched TimesLink, one of the nation's first major newspaper online service. It was the experience that gave him the insight into digitally powered automotive classified advertising on the internet that he saw the great growth opportunity. A quick search online turned up the following slides. The, um, we have Chip uh, looking good there, nice pose. I found that you find a lot of pictures of Chip in the early days. All the shots are, it's all about perspective. They're all looking down on Chip, right? It's all looking down. And then at some point, when he got the CEO moniker, he figured out perspective, right? If you take the picture from the right angle, you're as tall as a skyscraper. Now that's something to take notice of. Growing up, Chip said he had everything that a kid could want. Two square meals a day, a closet to sleep in, and an imaginary dog. He has come a long way. Please give a warm Innovative Dealer Summit welcome to Chip <laughs> Perry. Wow. Thank you, Mike. Wow. wow, what an over-the-top introduction. Thank you. And uh, yes, I did have hair back then in the early days of Auto Trader. It's a real thrill to be here today in Colorado. Uh, like Jonathan Ord, who I had the pleasure of following, uh, said, you know, we had a chance to present at Tim Jackson's first Innovative Dealer Summit, which was a thrill then, and this thing has really blown up and gotten a lot bigger, so it's a thrill to be back. I also want to make a call out to Jeff Carlson sitting here. Uh, outgoing chairman of NADA. If you went to the show this year, you saw a big 100th birthday party. It was a great event, and I know it's, uh, I know it's a part of your pride to have a member of your state uh, association lead NADA. So thank you, Jeff, for all things you've done for American car dealers. What I'd like to do this morning, in my little bit of time, is uh, basically talk about how we're fixing true car. Uh, you heard about all these things I'm responsible for. You can sum it up by saying, fix the company. Make it work better for car dealers. That's the summation of it. But I'd like to explain what we're doing today. Also, leave you with some tips in the spirit of this kind of show, where we're all looking for nuggets on how we can improve the business and make it better. Uh, we've done a study of the, of the top performing, most successful dealers on our network, and I'd like to share with you the results from that. But to jump right in, basically what True Car does it's a marketplace that brings buyers and sellers together like a lot of third parties. We do it somewhat uniquely in that we have both uh, consumers who come to the True Car website, but they also come to a wide range of other sites and they see the same experience. We call them our affinity partners. There's 500 of them. And they, they, if you go around the circle from the right, you can see on the top right, they mem represent member organizations like Sam, Sam's Club. Uh, then coming around the circle a bit farther, employee benefits organizations. In the bottom, publishers like Car and Driver and, and Consumer Reports. On the, on the left-hand side, insurance companies. The biggest one is USAA. And top left, a bunch of financial, financial institutions, banks, credit unions, and others, including Chase Auto Finance. All these organizations work with TrueCar by sending their members to our experience. And they do it exclusively. So we have, what, we have one way exclusives, them to us, but us not to them 500 times over. And that's true because 
the people who come to TrueCar get a different experience than they get at other third parties, and these kind of organizations want their members to have that benefit. As a result of all those partnerships, about half of all the car buyers in America, new car buyers, touch a true car type experience during their journey. And that's across the entire network. And, and, uh, and, and the, before I got there, as a result of the momentum that I got established, it's a growing brand, growing site. Uh, you can see on the bottom the year over year change in the penetration, the usage of, uh, of all these different sites across America. Uh, between 2016 and 2015, True Car is up 11 points. So I'm, I'm proud to say that we touch a lot of car buyers. At the same time, we've ruffled a lot of feathers, and I want to explain what we're doing to address that. The way we work is that we bring these unique visitors to our website. We have 7 million of them. 6 million configure a car every month, and 5% of that 6 million, 350,000 people, will register with TrueCar by putting their name and address and phone number in order to receive the information they want about the cars available for sale at your dealership. And of that 350,000, we track to a sale 20% of them, which means that only 1% of the people who come we realize any revenue for. So that 20% is important because I'll explain to you that we introduce consumers to three dealers, so the average dealer close rate is about seven to eight percent. But having a closed loop system like this enables us to provide you a number of benefits. One is uh, an attribution model, which gives you some sense of what's working with us. Also, the data that we receive enables us to give you some analytics on how you're performing in your market. Uh, and it also enables us to provide consultative support with an understanding of what your close rate is on the leads that we send to your stores. When I came to the company a little over a year ago, I began with a listening tour all across the country to try to understand and hear directly from dealers what was going on. I knew there were big problems, obviously, when I arrived, uh, because many dealers had been alienated and offended by True Car over the years. This is what I heard. You cause a race at the bottom. You put friction in the car buying process. Your customer service stinks. Your advertising offends, offends us. Um, I, we don't like the way you use your data, our, our data, meaning your, deal, or your data, and your billing model isn't flexible enough. Other than those things, everything was fine. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of issues. So what we went about doing was fixing them, doing what I call shaving the sharp, jag, jagged edges that point out toward car dealers that were erected when this company got built. The company was established essentially as a consumer crusader wasn't sensitive and didn't have the, the belief system that to be a, a, a good third party in this country, in this, in this industry, we have to serve dealers and consumers equally with equal passion and create a win-win. What consumers want is you know, a good upfront, uh, transparent car buying process. They want to know that they're, they're paying a market correct price for their car and they want a good purchasing experience. And that's what we should do and that's what we're about right now. Dealers want, you all need, a good flow of consumers that you can efficiently source and then uh, turn profitable car deals and be serviced after the sale, meaning the working with the vendor. And that's what we're all about. So making a win-win is what I believe True Car can do and is working hard toward doing. So what we did was a number of things to address the ills that I found. We changed our product, how it works. We changed our customer service. We changed our advertising. Uh, we, and we built all this into what we called our pledge to American car dealers. You can see it at truecar.com slash pledge. We made the product work better. We, we eliminated a lot of the race to the bottom effects. We had something called the anonymous dealer list page that people saw after they configured a car, which enabled you know, consumers to see prices before they registered. And then consumers saw then a, typically a virtual car instead of a real car, a certificate. That promoted kind of a dynamic of, 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 of aggressive bidding that, that hurt dealers and didn't help consumers. We changed that. We eliminated that page on the website. We've done other things since then to, uh, to reduce the uh, downward profit pressures that, that a commodita commoditized sort of uh, experience that TrueCar used to have produces. We also put our money where our mouth is on customer service. When I arrived, we had three or four people in the field. Now we have 100 servicing you all, 
They're, they're, they're called client success managers. We have a couple of them right in the back, TR, and another lady, I, I, um, first name? Anyway, two in the back. Um, their whole job is to help you sell more cars, not to upsell you to any new product. Um, we also worked hard on fixing your concerns around how we use data in our system. We used to, when our closed loops, in our closed loop system, you send us a file every day which includes your name and address and phone numbers of the people you sold cars to. We used to keep all that data. We erase now the data for unmatched sales. These are people that you work hard to bring into your store that did not touch true car at all in the car buying process. We smoothed out our billing process and we changed our advertising. We no longer say never overpay, come to true car because that implies you overcharge. Those kinds of things. So we fixed a lot of those, but what I really want to talk about today beyond the fixes is the work we've done to um, bring kind of a, a much stronger passion for helping you succeed in this marketplace. One of the things I learned in my old life, and also when I traveled the world after I left Auto Trader in 2013, I had a, a non-compete that lasted two years, uh, and I spent, but it didn't apply in the, outside the United States. So I traveled the world in our industry, uh, working in eight different countries. And I found the same thing every place I went, which is when you have a two-sided digital marketplace, there's always a range of, of success that the sellers can achieve. And you have a tendency to rate the seller's success based on volume. But there's a better way to do it if you can find a productivity-based metric, productivity that normalizes for size, you can really discover who's doing the best work. So in the world of classifieds, that productivity metric is vehicle detail pages per car because it normalizes for size. In, in our, in, at TrueCar, because we can track a consumer all the way to a sale and we see every dealer's close rate, close rate normalizes for size. So like I said earlier, the average, we, we, we send, uh, the, the average close rate for the system is 20%, but we introduce one consumer to three dealers, so the average dealer is seven or eight percent. We can see in our system dealers that have 10, 12, 15, 18 percent close rates. So they're doing something different than the ones that have average or below average. So right after I got there, we set a team out to first study this data. I call it being an SOB, not of the kind you think, but a student of the business. So we wanted to be a student of our own business to be able to help you be better students of your business. Find the successful dealers, study them, and, and trying to find patterns of what they're doing that's different than others. That's what I'd like to share with you now. So uh, what we've also done is a bunch of consumer research similar to what Jonathan described. And when you have third parties that do consumer research, they have some common themes, but they're also a little nuanced set of differences. So we see some nuanced differences in the research that we've done here. But essentially what we see the most successful dealers do is map their sales process better than less, less successful dealers into the pain points, solving the pain points that consumers have in the car buying process. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? that the people who win in a competitive market meet consumer needs better than others. Kind of common sense, so, but the data actually shows it. So these are, the, these are the car buyer pain points that our research has, has uncovered. It's not all that atypical, but they fall into four buckets. One relates to convenience, you know, uh, amount of time it takes, a feeling of being handed off in the store. By the way, you'll have access to all these slides. There's a fair amount of data you're about to see. There'll be a torrent of data coming at you here in a second. Uh, and you have all the slides later. And you'll see my, ad my, my email address and phone number here later, so happy to send them to me myself, or uh, Tim and Arnold can get them to you later. So convenience is a big one. Customization is an interesting one. The way they express it is they don't want to be feel like, put like they're on an assembly line when they're buying a car. Uh, and many dealerships have fairly, you know, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, structured sales processes, and consumers like to do it their way. A third one is transparency. You hear a lot of people talk about that, and people do want to see, you know, what uh, and be able to compare, you know, what at, at a deep level and understand all the economic factors of a deal. One of the, one of the ladies in one of the focus groups we said we we, we attended or. Um, put on said this, there was, no, there was no financial explanation at all and it seemed like my payment came from some mystery algorithm because they did the math in the other room. So obviously this woman either was a math person herself or has kids in school to use the word algorithm. But to her it was too opaque and she would just like to have it laid out for her. And the fourth area is validation. Validation is the one that often gets a little bit 
um, it gets us, uh, doesn't quite get enough visibility when we think about pain points. People want to have some touch point that enables them to confirm the information they're receiving from a dealer is correct. And that res that's a result of the well-known, as Jonathan referenced, trust gap that exists between consumers and dealers in America. So those are the pain points that we see. And when we study the dealers who are, have better than average close rates, we look for the ones that are roughly two times the average, which is in the you know, 15 to 20 percent range. Well, when we look at these dealers, what we see is them having higher close rates as well as higher market share in, in geographies that our data science team helps define around every store in America. So if you're a true car dealer, you can see what we call your backyard, which is the zip codes where consumers are closest to you. You can also see competition zones where it's a jump ball between you and other dealerships. And you can see the red zones are your conquest zones, which are other dealers' backyards. And we measure close rates, um, margins, and uh, um, uh, down at the salesperson level for you through these geographies. But when you, when you, when you look at close rates this way, what it shows us is, uh, and we, we find the dealers with the highest ones, there's a, there's a theme here. Uh, and we, we have a little program. We passed out these little um, flyers on each of your tables. We call it the 10 Habits of Highly Successful Dealers. And this came out of this program to go off and study the most successful ones. Now, um, one of the things I learned in 20 years at autotrader.com, oh, it's actually 16 years, 20 years in the industry, is that, that uh, successful dealers figure it out on their own. They don't need uh, guidance from third parties. And there will always be a bubbling up effect. And that's where these really top performers come from. And uh, what I learned by working with you all over the years is that the wisdom in how to succeed, number one, and how a third party should serve you guys, the wisdom comes from the dealers. Meaning the insights that we get from you and the advice we get from you on how we should operate is what, we need, what needs to guide our business. That doesn't mean that every idea I receive from every dealer in America is brilliant. I can't say that. But what I can say is in aggregate, when you crowdsource you all, the wisdom comes from you. But these, I, these insights come from a study of the folks like you who have been very successful. So I'd like to cover a few themes here, a few themes because I can't cover all 10 of them. They touch pricing strategy, process, the concept of validation, and the way in which you express value to your, your customers. When we look at top performing dealers, we see that they tend to adjust their pricing on the market more frequently than the dealers who tend to set it and forget it. The way true car works is you set a price for every car, invoice, offset, at a year, make, model, trim level, and then we apply it to your individual vehicles. The dealers who are on the market more frequently have higher close rates. We also studied, this is an interesting observation, the highest, highest close rate dealers in, in our network have prices that are comparable to the average. So you might suspect that in order to have a high close rate, you have to have a very low price. Not true. The high-performing the, the high dealers have essentially the same pricing. They don't sacrifice profitability in order to improve close. It has to do with the way they structure their sales process and deliver a good experience. And in terms of that streamlined experience, we're seeing that the top-performing dealers respond faster, respond faster to leads that hit their system. And this, this, this study both looks at how they work with TrueCar, but more holistically, how they operate their dealership. So we, we found the high performers and then studied everything they did. Another thing they do is they do their homework about the leads they receive and they respond to the consumer with, in a fairly tailored fashion. So this is a lead that comes from TrueCar, but it's a USAA member. And when you get a lead that way, we tell you the name and the rank of the person and we give you a chance and we give you the training and the tools to be able to know how to respond. So this is a case of a response that recognizes the member, in this case, a lieutenant colonel in the Army, and, and, and the dealer says, I'm your USA certified dealer. I'm here to help you buy the car the way you'd like to buy it. And, and that helps kind of bridge, bridge some of the trust gap because the USA folks looked up to uh, the USA as their financial mothership. And they consider 
a recommendation coming from that institution of a dealer in their local market to be a valuable one. So if you treat that customer a little differently, there's a tendency to treat all leads the same. If we treat that customer a little differently, what we see is successful dealers, the high, high close rate dealers, tend to, to do that. Another thing we observe is that many consumers in the car buying process, because we have this closed loop system, we see what they configure and then we see what they actually buy. It turns out most people buy a different car than they configure. Only a third of the time do they buy the exact same year make model trim car that they configured and that you received the lead for. 44% uh, they switch to a different trim and then about 10% they're in your make but in a different model and 13% uh, they're even in a different make completely. But the fact that people change, and you see this all the time, that, in, that, that implies that when we receive the lead, we can help them look at alternative vehicles. If that's the mindset, if that's the behavior, let's play into it. We want to sell them a car. doesn't matter if it's the one they actually configured. So we enable con the dealers to stay ahead of this by proactively presenting options that the, the consumer might be interested in through this offer tool in the, in the True Car portal. The other third concept I mentioned was um, validation. Uh, validation is, is this idea of using objective third-party information to bridge the gap that exists between consumers and dealers. And the way we term it, we talk about lean, lead with the trusted source and lean, and lean on the trusted source. These are the, the member organizations that many true car users are coming through. And we have a training program that enables your folks to ad adopt talk tracks. We have a, a, a person in our company, this is David Green, who, who used to sell cars for Sonic, and the way he did it then was, as a former uh, Marine himself, when he saw a USAA customer come through, he would, he would produce a video for them, thanking them for their inquiry. And you can see when he's doing it for USAA, he's, he's using the military mantra. And when it's a normal true car consumer, he's not but does a great job with that. Another thing that the top performing dealers do is they tend to lean in toward validating the price that they're offering the consumer is correct. So the way to think about the curve, the price curve is nothing but historical transactions in your local market. The center of the curve represents the average price. The average consumer doesn't want to pay more than their neighbor. The neighbor sits in the middle of the curve. So anytime you're on the middle of the curve with your price, or slightly to the left of it, you can validate that it's a market correct price. Defend gross, in other words. So there are a bunch of dealers out there who are, who are doing that well. Here's an example of not in Colorado, but the Dell Grand Automotive Group in California. What they do on their website, they're a high performing dealer in true car, twice the average of typical close rate, they're validating with a third party, Kelly Blue Book in this case. So you know, that starts to help to bridge the trust gap that exists. Another way to pr provide validation is for you with used cars is to be right up front with as much information as you have on the car. Here's an example of an independent dealer in Indiana who produces his own condition report on the car. And he, for every vehicle on his website, Right out there is how he scores the car. This is the kind of information that consumers find very appealing. When I, um, all those years in, at AutoTrader, we learned that, that the, the typical car buyer in America is a real information seeker when they're getting close to buying a car. We, as, as dealers, you know, that we kind of get tired of all this information. We think maybe it's too much. Actually, when you're getting close to buying a car, the consumers really want it. And for consumers who are willing to be, for dealers who want to be trans, transparent like this, we tend to see above average performance. And then in terms of communicating the value beyond just the price, we see successful dealers you know, going above and beyond there as well. So here's a dealership that when they're messaging somebody who they know is not that close to them, they're giving them a whole series of reasons to make that you know, 20, 30, 40 mile trip, including you'll be, be dealing directly with the general manager, you know, our tax rate is lower, we don't have advertising fees, we don't use bait and switch techniques, all these kinds of things. They, they build value messages that address typical concerns of, of car buyers. We also see high performers here in this town. Uh, there's a prominent BMW dealer. You know him well. You know, they, they talk about one price, one person, one hour. That's a, that's a strong, positive consumer benefit message, and they perform very well. 
Another dealer in our site actually presents their people as non-commissioned sales folks, and consumers like that as well. Dealers. Another, another way of showcasing value is through a program we call Buyer's Bonus. This is a series of benefits that True Car pays for, and, the, and the high perform, in high-performing dealers, what we're seeing is two times the average of activation of that program, which means that they're using it as part of the sales process to communicate the benefit that goes beyond what, what is available to any other customer. So these are the kinds of tips we're seeing. We have a program called 10 Habits. You can learn about it. And uh, here's my, my phone number and contact information. Uh, any, if any of you ever have a concern or anything you see that we're doing that, that doesn't seem right to you, chances are you're right. There's something, there's a glitch in our system or there's a flaw in how we're, we're serving your store. I'd be happy to hear about it and, and learn from you how we can make this a better uh, third party serving your, your stores. So I don't, we're not having time for any questions, but I think I stayed in my time box, didn't I, Mike? Fantastic, Jim. Well, I appreciate your time very much. Great being here in Colorado. Enjoy the rest of your show. Give it up for Chip Perry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, I, I love, uh, if you think about from where, where it was to where it's become, uh, it started off as a consumer crusader, and then I, I love Chip's comment of the wisdom comes from you where we actually go out and study the high-performing dealers. Uh, some amazing stuff going on in here, the why buy messaging. Uh, I have stores who've started to acknowledge the online journey as part of the meet and greet. How you, do, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, you know, what research have you done? Where have you been online? Things like that. Let's, let's, let's talk about that journey, acknowledge it, and then move the customer forward. So uh, some really neat to, to potential action items from that particular presentation. I know what you're saying, uh, and I hear you say it in stores, you're always saying, you know, if I had the chance to talk to the guy who runs fill-in-the-blank uh, company, this is what I'd tell him. Well, we just had three wonderful CEOs up here. Uh, the room is sprinkled with a few more, so this is your chance. All right, so make sure you take advantage of the opportunity to talk with some of these wonderful people.